Serializable snapshot isolation is here for Postgres. I'm sorry. True serializability? Yes. Doesn't that cause blocking? No. There is no blocking that isn't already there with snapshot isolation. But how can that be? Don't you need predicate locks for serializable transaction isolation? Yes, at least for SSI. But the locks don't block anything, they just flag read-write conflicts. What are read-write conflicts, and why do they matter? When two transactions are running at the same time, neither can see the work of the other. If a transaction fails to see something written by a concurrent transaction, the reader appears to have executed first. And your point is? Read-write conflicts are the cause of all serialization anomalies under snapshot isolation. Two concurrent transactions can each appear to have run before the other because of read-write conflicts. Or the loop in time may involve more transactions. But it tends to end badly. A transaction should not be its own grandfather. But transactions appear to execute in the order they commit, don't they? It's just sort of ill-defined due to the overlap. No. It's been perfectly well-defined for years, based on read-write conflicts and write-read conflicts. It's just that without help, snapshot dislocation allows a set of transactions to contain a cycle in the apparent order of execution. So, no blocking? No. Then how does SSI prevent these cycles in the apparent order of execution? It kills things. But only if things reach a state where there could be a cycle. Where there could be a cycle? Yes, there will be some false positives, where SSI cannot be sure it is safe, even though it is. Isn't rolling back transactions expensive? There is a cost to it. But that cost should be balanced against the blocking and disk rights involved in the explicit locking requests which are required if you want to enforce data integrity without SSI. And without SSI you need to figure out what to lock when. With SSI it just works. That sounds pretty cool.